Hey there, America. This is Dan Baker again with Blue Collar Talent Scouts, joined by my partner, Wood Boyles. He is right there in that window. Say hi, Wood. Morning, fellas. Afternoon, fellas. Good evening, fellas. Excellent. <laughs> this is another edition of Frontline Stories. This is where Blue Collar Talent Scouts really likes to shine a spotlight on what's going on out there in the field, whether it's service, whether it's construction, whether you're in the electrical field, plumbing field, or the air conditioning field. Every single vendor out there, it seems like, Billy, they, they, they really try to get out there and get contractors to spend money with them. We really like to focus on these specific podcast videos on the field because, like it or not, the folks in the field, they're the ones that allow us to do what we do here. And without further ado, I'm already talking to Billy without properly introducing him. My apologies. This is Billy. Everybody knows him as the owner of Billy Go. Uh, he has a pretty fantastic resume behind him. But one of the most exciting and interesting things about what he's got going on right now is an amazing cut of the uh, um, cutting edge state of the art software program called Sarah. And so what I'm going to do right now, Billy, is I'm just going to ask you to introduce yourself to the world the way you would like them to know you. And let's just start chatting, bud. All right, man. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm like you said, I'm Billy Stevens, the uh, owner of Billy Go, a plumbing and HVAC service company. Uh, that we specifically built for our software company so that we could build some really good software to help guys out in the field. What is the number one thing that you notice about how your software differs from other software platforms out there in, in just one sentence? I think, I think the tech app um, is, is really the game changer. Uh, we want to encourage the techs to run calls in a certain way so mm -hmm. that we can get consistency. Right. Um, you want a second sentence? No, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you told me one. I, I did. It. I did. I, I was curious to see if we could do it in one. But let's well, you know, he told me before we got on here, there's no rules, and then he told me I can only say one sentence. So I'm just a little confused. That's so, Dan. Uh, that's Dan, the rule breaker. <laughs> well, I'm a Navy vet. That's what the Navy does. And today's the Navy's birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Navy. Happy birthday, Navy. <laughs> so, um, all right. So we'll go back to the no rules, right? No rules. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. So. Actually, you know, the tech is the is the heartbeat of every company. Uh, mm -hmm. Without the technicians, you can't do anything. And I've always built my companies with the techs being the first line uh, in, in all things, meaning the entire company supports technicians so the technicians can get their job done. And with the proper support, they can bring in more money for themselves and their families and create legacies themselves. Awesome. Uh, one of the things we've always done at our companies is we we do uh, personal finance in our meetings. We don't do meetings talking about plumbing. We don't do meetings talking about HVAC. We do personal finance. And I think it's something that's super important. There's two things that are going on in the fields and the trades these days that don't happen anywhere else. Number one is we can make a lot of money in this industry as a technician uh, right out of school without wow. well, without any college debt, any, Amen to that. We'll any of this stuff, you can definitely mm -hmm. do that. That's the main thing. And what's really cool about that, just a little add on to that, is every day is a different day. You're not stuck in an office. That's what I think is the most uh, interesting thing about being a technician is every job is different. Every day is different. You're out and about and you're outside, you're inside, whatever is going on. Beats being in an office working for some big corporation, right? And I think a lot of guys need to really consider the trades because it's a six-figure industry, and it's just not barely a six-figure industry. You can get yourself well into the six-figure uh, pay system, um, you know, just with experience, right? And do that on-the-job experience doesn't exist in college. So I don't know if you can see, but I got goosebumps on my arms right now. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a former field tech myself and a service manager. And, and even to today, you'll hear people talk about you know, the, uh, the the joys of being in the trade, the longevity of being in the trade, the potential six-figure income of being in the trade. But did you just say that with your staff at Billy Go, do you have financial meetings with them, personal financial meetings, to show them how they can actually... Oh, absolutely. Are you yeah. kidding? That's, please, if you don't mind. Let, let, we started that, and cow. I started doing that in 1996 with my first company. It was called Berkey's Plumbing, Heating, and Air. And one of the things we did to grow our tech base is we would teach them about personal finance. And I didn't care what industry you came from or what job you've had. It could have been your first job. I had a full-fledged Canadian ballerina, male ba ballerina, come in as a technician. I met him. 
All I'm looking for is integrity, honesty. I can't train those things. If you have those things, that's all I need in this industry uh, to hire you. And, and so we want technicians that have those traits and then we teach them how to do the job. And we have a system built in our companies and where we can take you from no experience and then we have a training session all the way through and how we can build you up to the technician level. And all the time, all the while, while we're doing this, we're we meeting with you on a regular basis about your own personal finance. And we teach you the value of money. And, and that's really what's important because we, we, if we can learn to live within our means, we can actually prosper. Uh -huh. And, and so teaching you guys how to do this and girls, this is what we do at our, at our office with our technicians is what do you do with this extra money? Do you go buy a boat or do you invest it? Okay. So that, <laughs> why, why are you smiling? Lynn? <laughs> yeah. Go buy a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've learned the definition of a boat over the last year and a half. So another thousand, thousand baby. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Would uh, would uh, would you mind sharing with uh, if you want to share with everybody, you know, kind of where you're at and what why or well, I I live down in Galveston, Texas, right now. I I bought a sailboat and I'm learning to sail, and it's a lot of fun. I'm actually looking at the possibility of living on the boat, but. You know, uh, Dan gives the polite version of the uh, definition of a boat, the bust out another thousand. Uh, the first year when I bought it, I knew I had to put some money into it, had to get the bottom painted and a couple other things. So I'm at, I'm at the guy who is going to do all that. We pulled it out of the water and he um, he starts going through, here's what needs to be done here, this, this and this. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. well, how much money are we talking there? And I'm not complaining. I just want to. I'm doing the mental math and I want to make sure I'm on the same page. And he looks at me and says, what? I'll clean it up. Well, heck boy, you bought a boat. You know what boat stands for? And I said, well, I've always heard break out another thousand. He's like, it's not it. Bend uh, over and take it. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, so boats are good. Uh, go, uh, and, and I guess boats can be expensive, huh? <laughs> What, what is your take with so far on what Billy's talking about? I, I've been in this trade for a long time. I've been exposed to this trade for a long time, uh, recruiting both, uh, you know, in the field, working for, for vendors, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and all that type of stuff. And I don't know if it's out there or not. If it is, I certainly haven't heard about it, but it's pretty fantastic that you actually take the time out to help your folks because, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it's it's good yeah. business sense in general, but it's also a good human thing to do. You know, I mean, show them show them the value of what you can do, so sure. you can be something that uh, that Absolutely. takes care of your family. Or well, your, I think too. I think too. Having been in the industry for almost twenty years, working in HR, most of the financial education I've seen in the trades relates to oh. He, Here's what you need to do. You need to get into the company 401k or mm -hmm. here's what you need to do. You need to buy stock through the employee stock purchase plan. But if you're talking about, hey, look, just what what are your options and how do you build wealth, you know, based on what you, you know, what you produce, that's that's a little different than I've heard most places. Yeah. That it almost sounds like what uh, what they're finally starting to do, uh, starting to do with pro athletes, because there's an there's a big, a big issue there yeah. of folks that make crazy money in a short amount of time. And, 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 you know, it's like they've got a hole in their bucket, you know, and they keep yeah. pouring water and it goes nowhere. And that's always been a big thing, you know, for me as well, especially, you, you know, uh, on the recruiting and retention side, when we're talking to companies, yeah. uh, again, that's fantastic. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. Well, you have to, because, you know, a lot of these kids that we hire come from Jiffy Lube or Home Depot and they're making, you know, 14, $15 an hour, or, you know, something like that, which is no, no, uh, nothing to sneeze at. It's sure. really good funds, but relatively quickly in our organization, um, they can, you know, get in a hundred thousand dollars, yeah. you know, within a year. Absolutely. And so they need to know what to do with all that extra money. That's and, it, and, and it, it doesn't take four or five years. If you have a system in place, go to work for a company that has a system in place and move you through the system. And mm -hmm. as you excel in one area, they'll give you the next area to excel in. Mm -hmm. And then you keep continue to move forward. And, yeah. and that's really what we're looking for. And majority of the folks that are now licensed with us, whether it's HVAC or plumbing mm -hmm. or whatever, um, have come from this farm system that we created. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, and I think too, there's also the whole thing. It's not as prevalent now as it was 10 or 15 years ago, but 
guys who used to come into the trade uh, on the AC side uh, as an install or install helper. They'd come in, typically get hired in March, April, and they're in a in an environment like Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and they see these checks that are just astronomical, and they go out first thing. If they hadn't been trained or hadn't been warned about it, they'll buy a boat, they'll buy a new car, they'll they'll you know put money down on a home, and then at the end of the you know season, things kind of slow down. And they still do to some degree. I don't think it's quite the same as it used to be. But all of a sudden, they're looking at it like, I can't afford what I've committed to. Mm -hmm. So having mm -hmm. some budgeting sense and some guidance there, pretty big deal. So here's something. Uh, this is just something that I always start the meetings with. And, and when I have new guys, and I keep repeating it over and over again. So there's a difference here. So if you have a rent, if your rent's a thousand dollars, and let's say your car payment's five hundred dollars, and uh, your utilities and all that stuff's another five hundred, I'm just using round numbers mm -hmm. here, two thousand dollars. So you're you're budgeting for two thousand dollars a month right there, right? Mm -hmm. But the trick is, how much does it cost you every thirty days? So it's two thousand dollars a month, but what does it cost you every thirty days? That's interesting because some you've got one month with 28 days. You've got some months with 20, uh, 30 so days. In a 30 day period, you pay twice. You pay your rent two times in 30 days. You pay your car payment two times in 30 days. You pay your electric bill two times in 30 days. This is once you understand that you have to budget for 30 days instead of by the month, you'll start realizing how quickly you can get yourself in trouble if you don't. So if you budget monthly, Mm -hmm. that's one thing. However, if you budget every 30 days, that's a whole nother deal. So you need twice the money. And obviously you're making this much a month, this much the next mm -hmm. month and on and on. But the cash flow part of it is every 30 days is, is coming out twice. Yeah. And that's how we get ourselves in trouble because we go to the furniture store and it's only $90 a month, mm -hmm. but it's technically 180 bucks every 30 days. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that is what I try to teach is how to make your money go further. Now, I'm not telling you not to go buy stuff. I'm telling you mm -hmm. to, to think about it in a different way. Right. And what I see is the kids that go out and start making this big money, mm -hmm. they go out and they get a new truck, maybe a more truck than they should have gotten right. or, or the boat or the, the UTV, you know, the ATVs. And they go out and they buy these things. And then, like you said, we get the off season and, now they're having to sell. When we teach these guys mm -hmm. how not to sell, how to give options and listen, mm -hmm. now they're trying to sell because they have a boat payment or a car payment. And then those are the guys that I got to pull them in and say, look, you're getting complaints. You're always trying to sell. We don't want to rip off Grandma Smith. And so they continue to, they, they, what they do is they get out of what they've been taught that they got them there in the first place, that $100,000, $120,000 a year. They get out of that sequence because now they have to make it. And so they change the way they used to sell because they're desperate to sell more, right? And, sure. wow. and so this is why we started doing this financial class with wow. our, with our uh, technicians, everyone in the company is, mm -hmm. is for this very reason, because we didn't want them imploding. We wanted good employees. We didn't want employees that were stressed out financially. And we recognized a long time ago, we were paying guys back when the wage, a, a top wage in the 90s was 20 bucks an hour in the industry. Yeah. And we were easily paying our guys 30 and $35 oh, an wow. hour because we we had a very well-run machine and we could do this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so we could attract the best people and, and, and build a business with quality people with the integrity and honesty and that would listen and wanted to learn. And that's... That's what we were doing. And that's the kind of companies you got to align yourself with. And that's kind of what Sarah does is we're, we're taking the chaos out of these companies so they can step back and remember why they're a business mm -hmm. and their, their actual customers is not the customer they go to the house. It's the people that work at that company. That's awesome. That's awesome. The reason why you created Sarah, I know you've said this 15 million times, you know, um, but with, with folks in the field, whether it's on the construction side, service side, what would you say to them? Why why is this so important, this Sarah platform 
for you and how that would actually positively affect somebody in the field who happens to have a phone or a tablet. Right. Well, um, first and foremost, it's very intuitive. It, mm -hmm. it's, it has a lot of automation in it. And so you don't have to dig through your price book. You, you, you select what you want to do, and then it, it will a actually tell you what the next level is if you want to do good, better, best, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that it does is, let's say you're out at a job, and your job is to flip uh, a lead to a sales consultant. Mm -hmm. You can do this right on the app. You don't have to call your department manager or the dispatcher to find out when they would be available or if they're available. You can actually right there in front of Mrs. Jones, the customer, schedule this because the software knows the availability of the sales consultant. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing for the sales consultant. He can actually do the same thing when it's time to schedule the installation. Mm -hmm. And he can do all of this without all of the chaos that happens now where you have inter office emails, you're entering an email and what you want to do, plus you entered it into your software, so you're doing it twice. And we eliminate all of that stuff and we make it very seamless. And we talked about the farm system. Mm -hmm. And so we built our software to create a farm system for all the companies that are on Sarah. And you want to farm system. Farm system is what uh, analogy that we use in baseball, right? You got the minor leagues and then you try to make it to the show, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so we take take inexperienced people and we decide, you know, let them decide. You want to go on the plumbing end of it? You want to go on the HVAC side of it with, or, you know, whatever you want to do. And then they get in there and we, so we start them off. We put them all, put them with a team member that is experienced and can educate them and teach them stuff, right? And they work with that person. And the goal is, is how do you replace that guy that's teaching you? That's the first goal. That's your first step. So that that guy can get another new kid. Right. And then now you're a lead and you get someone and you teach mm -hmm. them, right? That's what they're Absolutely. doing. And so even in plumbing, we have installers in our organization and we, and we design it, uh, Sarah also to handle plumbing installers. You know, we all know there's HVAC installers. Right. Absolutely. Right. And, and so we even have plumbing installers as well. So our plumbers at the end of the day and our technicians, you know, they're, they're moving the actual hard work over to someone else. And so that's when you meet, meet take the, when, that's when you're in the show. Right. Wow. When everyone else is doing the work for you and you're just out there taking care of the customers and, and, and bringing in revenue to enhance your, your uh, ability to make more money. How hard is that transition when, when someone goes from another system or operating system or even just old school dispatching magnets on the, on the map on the wall type White thing? Boards, paper tickets, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, any of that to, to what you're talking about. Do you get a lot of pushback or, at all? Uh, no, we haven't seen any pushback on it uh, because it's very intuitive and it's and it's just as easy to use as an Apple iPhone. I mean, it's kind of like the same thing. You pick which app, what do you want to do next, and it flows through that uh, okay. sequence. And it's very easy to use. It literally, when we bring on a new company to use Sarah, we just spend two hours with the text. That's it. Um, we hired school teachers because they're getting out of their professions as well. Yeah. And because they're tired of all the red tape and all the mm -hmm. stuff that's going on with them. And right. they're not able to even teach anymore. They've become babysitters sure. or, or whatever. And and so these teachers have come to work for us here at Sarah. And their job is to, you know, uh, train these technicians, train everyone in the company how to use the software. But what's really cool about it, using teachers. Yeah, I mean, they I mean, can, that's, that's perfect. You know, you put a room full of text in a Zoom with the school teacher in charge. I mean, everything works. She, they, can, she can control a room. Yeah, for sure. And and she knows how to teach. And there's that empathy and the and all the things that teachers have. <laughs> that's um, awesome. That's awesome. And then teaches them how to use it. And then we actually let them go out and use it the next day. They have a sandbox and they play around with it. And then the next day they come back for one more uh, one hour. Uh, training and they actually run service calls right there and they can and by that time 90 percent of them are already doing it. well okay that's, that's pretty awesome. awesome that's pretty awesome I've, I've got a thought about what he said but i don't want to step on uh step on uh anything you're about to say would this is no, our go ahead <laughs> you're you're have keep, going, say? keep going <laughs> Well, one thing I, I, I got to tell you, so I, I, I know it sounds like we're jumping around a little bit, but what, what's interesting, anytime, uh, anytime we talk to a contractor that is not actively using some type of software, which mm -hmm. the reality is a lot of folks out there, if they're using an Excel spreadsheet in their mind, they're thinking that software. 
right? I mean, I've run across it a million and one times, you know? Um, but whenever we're talking to contractors um, who do not currently have some type of FSM or, or, or ATS or anything like that, we remind them that the average age of folks in the field right now, right, is it's in their 50s. In some markets, it's what, about 47, 48? Other markets, it's in the mid to high 50s. Now, I mean, that's my demographic. These are my people, right? So what happens is if we're looking to really attract some of these young folks, guys, gals, whoever's interested in really getting out there, making a difference, you know, yeah. um, uh, software has got to be where it's at because they're already attached to their phone, period, period. Yeah. You know, so for a contractor, and a lot of people get nervous and scared. You know how it is. I mean, you're, you know, you've definitely, uh, you know, been in the contracting world for, for a spell. Yeah, and, and I'm computer illiterate. I mean, and that's why I built it. Because yeah. I want to build something I can use. That's awesome. What what would you say? Um, what would you say is the first reaction, not from the contractors, from the field folks? What would you say is 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 is, is a first reaction or two uh, that you hear from from guys, whether they've used another software platform with their uh, with their app? Majority of them have. Mm -hmm. um, and really, the first reaction is is the ease of use. That's awesome. It's it just how simple it is. And you can literally build five quotes in three minutes. Wow. Where everywhere else you got to go sit in your truck for about 30 to 45 yeah. minutes. And and that's where it's, we make it super simple. So we we figured out how to set up the price books. We had the price book installed in our software. It it all talks to the whole system. And so it automated the, you know, what you what you need to do next. Wow. Right. And that's that's really the main thing about it. So we just made it simple. So you just like if you want to sell up. Um, you know, if you want to sell uh, a tune-up, you know, or you want to do a tune-up or, mm -hmm. or sell anything at all, maybe a condenser, you need to replace the condenser. You just literally uh, touch the button for condensers. It shows you what's, which ones to use. Mm -hmm. If you pick the the uh, 14 tier little one, you click that one, and then it automatically gives you the next upgrade and any add-ons that you would need mm -hmm. to do that job. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, are right there available to you. So you don't have to go through a price book and look for all this stuff. It's just right there, pre-programmed. And you just click the things that you want. Oh yeah, I'm selling there a little bit of insulation as well. Mm -hmm. That's an add-on, it's right there, click. And so then, as we're talking right here, you're the tech, I'm the customer. You're building all this right here without having to go to your truck. Don't have to go to the truck. You can build it right in front of your piece of equipment mm -hmm. if you want and then take it well, in there and show it to them. See, in my mind, what that does, uh, again, both coming from the field and also my experience, you know, with uh, you know with other software platforms, I can't help but think that takes the, the skittishness out or at least a little bit more from the homeowner. And what I mean by that is if somebody's going away, kind of like a used car salesperson, mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, they're not talking to their boss. They're going back there, getting a drink of water, saying, oh, my gosh, I got to deal with this guy, you know, or this girl. And, you know, maybe they try to tweak this or tweak that. But if they're doing it right in front of you, it's almost it's almost like the veil has been lifted at least a little bit more. Absolutely. So the uneasiness that the homeowner or commercial building owner or restaurant owner or whatever the service call or installation call you, you know, is for if you, it's almost like you're, you're, you're putting your, you know, you're, you're putting uh, everything right there on the table and say, boom, 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 there you go. Yep, you know, you wow. And that's pretty cool. Builds them out. You show it to, to the customer and you just slide all the different things that you want to show them and let them make a decision. Well, you, you know, I got to tell you, you know, but what, before I go into to, to my, my, my next train of thought, because I'm just getting so excited about all the different ways Something mm -hmm. like this, specifically, Sarah, with the way that you're presenting and the way that and I've seen it in action, we've both seen it in action, you know, a couple of times. I, I'm getting pretty excited about, you know, how, how this could be a really big attractor for folks, you, you know. Yeah, so we have data on this. I mean, we're seeing 55% growth in the first six months. And that's the growth from the technician selling 55% more. Therefore, their income is going up approximately by 55%. Well. Wow. And that's the key is how do we how do we build a system that's easy to use, allows the tech to do his job um, and make more money for himself, make more money for the co company mm -hmm. and 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 provide a great service for Mrs. Jones, the customer well, uh, all at the same time. And that is the whole point of what we built. I dig it. Uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty doggone cool, man. 
what, what would you say are the top are the top three things would in your mind that that kids that are in high school right now who are not considering the trades what would you say are, 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 are what some of the top three things or reasons why they would they would not consider the trades well I think part of it's just they and again I, I always default to plumbing on that when they think mm -hmm. oh what I'm gonna have to touch and deal with is not fun but they're, they don't even understand there's there's techniques and systems that keep some of that at, at arm's length or away. Then you also have the whole thing of, well, in their minds, they've seen too many t too many people on TV with the uh, plumber's crack and they're overweight and they're kind of lower level of intelligence, which is exactly the opposite of what I've seen mm -hmm. given my time in the field. But it's also where there's a lot of there's a lot of highlighting in the trades. Uh, you know, it's the typical local news at 10 or 11 where they're showing the, the one contractor or several contractors that do try and rip people off. Oh, I, you need a new water heater or the house is going to explode type stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that almost gives a negative experience. And then they don't really get to see the other side to it, which is this is a this is an honorable thing. Every, every one of the trades we talk about touches every person's life almost daily. I mean, who doesn't need clean water every day? Who doesn't yeah. have to deal with, you know, uh, electricity? I mean, as much as everyone holds up these, these things, you got you to gotta plug them in and charge them every sure. day. Yeah. And, and so there's all of that. And if you live somewhere in, in the Southeast, Summer times are almost unbearable anymore if you don't have AC. If you live up north, you better have some heat in the wintertime or else you're going to be hurting. Yeah. You know, I, I think some of us in Texas figured that out about a year and a half ago. <laughs> so I, I'd say all of that's part of it. But I think the real key is they don't see the potential. And along with that, the schools kind of push. I, I mean, schools, parents, everyone, everyone wants to be to see this generation be successful, this younger generation. Mm -hmm. But the only way that they've been programmed to do that is you got to go to college, you got to get a degree, and then you go out and you get a job. And dude, they got, and in Texas, it's like $27,000, $28,000 is the average debt coming out of college. And th they can't get a job because they may not have studied in a STEM program. And so all of a sudden, they got to either go get more college or whatever. So, Dan, I think you put me on a soapbox. and I did. Was, I did. And that, you did it. That but, was awesome. I like going on a soapbox. Yeah. He's nine foot 12. Nine, nine, 12. Yeah. He's nine foot yeah. 12. And so he's on a four, four foot soapbox. So he's like 437 feet. That's Texas. Uh, the biggest yeah. problem By the way, is that's the, Texas, man. The, the biggest problem isn't the height, it's the weight, you know, just saying. <laughs> but hey, Billy, you said something earlier about you you want a, and you've you've grown a couple of really successful businesses that are in the in the service trades in addition to this this software that's a support function, it sounds like for the trades. You made the comment about you need people who are going to be honest and have a work ethic, I think is what you said. And you can help with everything else. Talk a little bit from my perspective. Hey, look, we do a lot with companies, recruiting, retention, those types of things. What are some of the ways that you snake out if a person is probably not going to be on the honest side or is, you know, they're pretty lazy when it comes down to it. How do you, how do you sort that out in the selection process? So I have a hundred dollar bill on the table and I step out to take a call and see if it's still there when I get back. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. I was about to say, holy cow. <laughs> I think I read about a, I a, an NFL Maybe team not. that did something. I'm just kidding. An NFL <laughs> team did something like that, you know? I think I keep scooting off to the side because we're trying to, you need all the spotlight, man. <laughs> no, no. Um, no, you know, kind of that's what we do, not really, but uh, in a way. So we have a, a committee that interviews mm -hmm. everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And and we're just looking for someone, you know, that we that has that inherent trait, you know, of integrity and honesty, and 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 then some work ethic. And it, if we miss it, you know, we occasionally miss it, and that's all right. We we mm -hmm. uh, recover from that. But uh, for the most part, 
you know, we have different questions we ask, you know, about certain things. What would you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. And and kind of what kind of answers do we get? You know, and we want to know if these guys are capable of being leaders. You know, there's all kinds of technicians. And that, again, comes back to the farm system. Um, you know, I have really, really good technicians that don't like being in front of a customer. Mm -hmm. They just want to mm -hmm. fix stuff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we have a place for those guys. So, and then we have the ones that all they want to do is not fix anything and be in front of a customer and mm -hmm. replace things. And, and so we have different varieties. And then we, then we just have guys that, you know, I, I really just want to be in the install crew forever or whatever. And, and so these, the, we adapt those jobs to the type of person, right? And lead them in that way. And if they don't care about going through the system, you know, to being a tech, they can still go through the system of being a better or, or a trainer or a leader or an installer or whatever they want to do, mm -hmm. and even in the management. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I said, the, the ballerina guy yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that I hired, you know, the guy, you could tell just by meeting him, he had integrity and he was honest. I mean, to the core. And um, I, I'm very good judge of character on things like that. You know, I, I expect that from my children. I, you know, I want to hold myself up that same way. And so it's not that hard to detect, you know, someone's not there with on the same level that you're mm -hmm. trying to be on, right? Mm -hmm. And and so we just kind of lead them down a path, um, you know, to success. And if they if they follow, it works, and it works quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Trades are are fascinating, and it goes back to uh, you said earlier. I think one of you guys said earlier that you know we kind of look down on or whatever, but. I don't understand why that would be because mm -hmm. there's only 1% of us can, can do what we're doing. And oh, they're, all, and they're all standing around going, oh, it's broken. Yeah. All right. To, yeah. Me, to me, I always tell my people, you're in charge. You're the one in charge. Mm -hmm. And you're the one that should be respected because you're there to help those people. Now, I'm not mm -hmm. saying be a jerk or whatever, but what I'm saying is, is, you know, be in charge of your call, have the confidence in your abilities, and all of that will go away. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a customer that's kind of being, you know, not the way they should be, you know, and I don't see it as much anymore. I don't really hear about it as much anymore from the guys um, because they do go in with confidence and confidence comes from really good training. You know, if you train mm -hmm. the guys and you have a system in place and you make it to where the job can be done, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to have any trouble. Well, see, to, to think back off of what you just said, and I personally experienced this back in the field. Uh, of course, my wife wants me back in the field because you, I don't know too many guys this size that are cr crawling up and down in attics, you know what I mean? So uh, my diet was uh, AC 101. But um, the biggest challenge that I see for new burnout are are guys and gals that, that get interviewed, the contractor having it, and what at any point, because what's, with us some phenomenal stories about this, just, just jump right in. Um, yeah. The contractor says whatever they got to say to get that person on board, mm -hmm. right? And they'll tell the, the the potential applicant, Sam or Susie or whoever they are, oh yeah, we've got all the stuff in place. We'll help you here, we'll help mm -hmm. you there, blah, blah, blah. You know, whether they have a software platform or don't have a software yeah. platform, they bring them on board and then they they default back to that. Well, this is how I was trained. Yeah. And look at me. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I was shown. And basically, it's the best way to learn how to swim is to throw you out of the boat. And if you can't swim, you can't make it. They're washing people out of yeah. our trade, mm -hmm. Billy. Yeah. And these folks are never getting an opportunity to. Mm -hmm. so I, I mean, my, all hair and arms stand, but this it, it burns me up because. Yeah. The kids that are interested in coming into our field, the kids that are interested in making a difference, you can make a lot of money, but you're also doing great things. Think about the Texas freeze, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. I mean, they're famous without anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What didn't they the next relax the the regulations so people can come from other states to, yep. to help with the they're mass plumbing. gas that was there? All they're they're getting they're getting families up and running again. You know, if it's a hundred and oh my gosh degrees outside, you know, and you're and, and you're fixing an air conditioner, you're helping Grandma Smith with a breathing problem. I mean, these are facts, right? So it fires me up whenever contractors are just burning through these young, talented yeah. folks because they do that. It's clear to me, I mean, everybody knows this, but it's clear to me, you're putting your money where your mouth is on the contracting side because not only do you say you have a plan, you have a plan, 
you show them the plan, mm -hmm. you help them work the plan, mm -hmm. and then you meet with them afterwards about the plan. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? It, 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 is anything I said right there is, is the, is the sequence not, offer? No, that's exactly how it goes. You know, uh, finding a contractor that has his act together is important. Yeah. I mean, we're just as much at fault for kids not getting into space as anything mm -hmm. because, you know, we have so much of this old school mentality. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the old school mentality was when I was working for my dad back in the day was, you know, he gave you the worst job. Yeah. And if you made it, yeah. In, 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 if you don't grab about that, you're on to the next yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. You're going to yeah. work for me. You're going to get the worst job and I'm going to treat you like crap and everybody you're working around is going to treat you like crap. That, that, I don't, I know that probably still exists. I'm, I'm sure it does. It does. Sadly. Um, and it does with companies with big names too. Yeah. It's, unfortunately. You know, my job, my job is, you know, as, as a leader is to, is to teach. Mm -hmm. That's my job. I want to teach. I want them to teach them about the trades. I want them to teach them about life. Um, no one ever taught me. I had to learn it all myself. I had to learn to run a business myself. I know when there was no blueprint for me because I was mm -hmm. doing it back in, you know, in the nineties and there just wasn't a blueprint. And, and so I focused on making everything how I would want it to be if I was working there. Mm -hmm. And, and with that idea and that mindset, I was able to build a company with the employees being first mm -hmm. and, and the employees supporting each other and the camaraderie that, you know, happens. And we literally have employees that, you know, want to stand up and talk and tell about their experience from what they've learned. Right. You know, I have guys come to me and go, I want to learn more about business because maybe I want to be a business owner. What, what would happen if you did that at those companies? I want to learn how to run my own AC business. You know what I tell them? I'll tell you what, I'll put you on the path so you can own your own AC business and we'll go buy us one together. And that's, what we did. <laughs> that's awesome. Right, but you, awesome. but I need you to learn how to manage people. Now your job is different. Now you're going to have to learn how to manage people. So you're instead good. of throwing up that wall, and saying, oh, this you're guy's all of a sudden my competitor, you know, let's or, go buy a business and let's go. But I'm going to train you up on how to run it. Before that's we, pretty, that's before pretty awesome. I'm more put my money in it, right? That's pretty awesome. So, uh, that's so pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we do here. So Billy, sorry if I get if I get real no, bad. That's the only ones in the building. Next oh, there you go. Awesome. Yeah. But anyway, this is this is kind of a video room in here. That's yeah, it's blue screen and everything. Well, it's clear to me that I put this line a little too close to my face, but I can't feel it over here anymore anyway. Yeah. So I think we're good. <laughs> oh. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you look a little like a ghost on the one side. So. My nickname is not Icarus. I think I have flown too far. Now, well, let's see. Actually, we got let's put it over here. There you go. We're trying to sh Damn. show off his better side, but it is, it is. <laughs> that is his better side. That is his better side. You got it wrong. They were on the wrong side. Yeah, I I know what you're saying in in terms of that though. I I've seen. I mean, I loved being in HR in a lot of ways, and and that's a strange thing to say because most people hate HR. But I always found that if you were doing right by the people in the field. And, and you know, not not giving the farm away, but you were balancing things. You you really could make a difference for a company. Yeah. And I remember I had some kind of conversation I had to have with one of the GMs. He happened to be out front. He was the kind of guy who every person who came in the building, every employee, he knew. He greeted. He not only greeted by name, but he also would ask. You know, he he knew how to show that personal touch. We're talking, oh, hey, hey, Joe, how, how was your son's ball game the other day? You know, those kind of conversations. Well, he has a he has a plumber come up, look at him kind of up and down and says, yeah, someday I want to be a manager. So all I got to do is sit around, talk on the phone, smoke cigarettes, drink coffee and tell people what to do. And it's like they don't even understand the whole context right. of motivation and what you're talking about where you've got to build a team you've got to help them see each other as being essential to each other and then you you really got to figure out how do you develop each person that's that's all part of it so it's it can be pretty entertaining at times hey some people are easier to train than others I, i'll give you that but i think that's where a lot of people lose sight of it if if that first effort doesn't work then that's where at least in the big companies, HR gets a phone call. Hey, I told you this guy was going to be the best thing since sliced bread, but 
I got to get rid of him. He's no good at all. Well, yeah. that was four weeks. That was four weeks, man. What's going on? You know? No, definitely. Um, I, I'm just thinking about all the, I'm thinking about all the, the kind of the home runs that you've hit. Um, I, I know you you had mentioned, uh, and you said this many times on other podcasts. You had already mentioned here that you know, you've owned multiple businesses in the past and stuff like that. Would you mind kind of going through uh, a list of some of the things that you've been involved with since you first got in the trades? Oh, sure. Um, just start at the trades. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I was, my, my dad was a plumber. He, he had a plumbing company and, um, you know, his plumbing company did well when the economy was good and it did really bad when it was bad. I mean, it's just the way it was. And because there wasn't any planning or structure for slower times, mm-hmm. um, cause you know, most plumbing, Easter famine, kind, Easter of, thing, famine you know. kind of thing and he, he struggled back, you know, and so. I was in, you know, being in high school, I was a square peg trying to go in a round hole. I just didn't fit. I wasn't going to go to college. I knew I wasn't going to go to college. I didn't care to go to college. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do something, but I haven't figured out what I wanted to do because my dad showed me that that's not what I want to do. Right, right, right. Because it's too Easter famine, right? Right, right, right. right, I got a bad impression of it, so I avoided it Mm -hmm. for, for a long time. And... And so I decided to go work for the, you know, for a home building company and build homes because that was the guy, you know, that was giving my dad the checks. Right? So <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So that's why I that went, it, that went into, that's why I went into that industry. And and I was in that industry for a few years and um I made a good relationship with all my trades and um the the plumbing company that we were using to put in our plumbing for these new houses, his name was Berkey. That's what they called it. They called him Berkey, and his name was Tom Berkey White. But his name of his company was Berkey's Plumbing. And unfortunately, uh, at the, I think he was only like 47 years old and he passed away. Oh, man. Um, he had a heart attack and, and he drove right by the hospital in South Lake to go home to lay down. If he had gone mm-hmm. to the hospital, he'd probably still be here. That's what they said. Um, and he died, he died a couple hours later. So, um, and so then all of a sudden I had to go find another plumber and I, and I went and couldn't buy one. They were all so busy. And so I went over to, to, uh, Berkey's because they weren't doing a good job anymore. They couldn't, re- you know, they said it would take two or three, th- three weeks is what they told me. And they were going to raise my prices 20%. And all these things were changing all of a sudden now that, uh, Mr. Berkey wasn't there. And, and so I went to find another plumbing company to do our work and I couldn't find one. And so a couple of weeks later, I go back over to Berkey's and I, to, to the new people, they, or the same people, but new people running it. And I said, um, you know, I apologize for, you know, getting upset because you couldn't get to our work because usually they could just get there in a day or two. And now they were telling me three weeks and they wanted more money. And I said, I'll pay your additional money. And it's been like two weeks. Can you be there next week? And they're like, hell no. It's three weeks from today. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I need to know what's going on around here. You know, why are you stacked up? Did you lose people when Berkey passed away? What's going on? He goes, oh, no, it's just the economy is changing. I said, oh, so we're on another upswing. And, And we knew it, too, because we had sold four houses and we you know, in one weekend, and we were used to selling like one every oh, wow. three months, you know. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And so it just kind of happened real fast. And, and and this was in the mid-90s. And so um, I said, well, do you just blurted it out? Do you, do you think that she would sell the company to me? He goes, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it just wasn't going well. And she right. didn't know how to run the company. I mean, her husband just passed away. She was grieving and all, and all that stuff. She didn't know. And so I had a meeting with her and she gave me a set, gave me a price that I was like, you know, had to be Bill Gates to pay for that. Um, and of course I didn't have any, you know, very little money at all that we had saved. You had house builder money. You didn't have plumber money. Yeah, was, well, I wasn't the home builder. <laughs> I was working for the home builder. So I wasn't the actual home builder. Gotcha. So I was, I was making a paycheck. So gotcha. I didn't have the money. And um, so I um I said, well, I'll buy it from you, but I can't pay that much. I can pay, you, you think about it, you know, and I'll come back or whatever you call me, but I can't pay that much. I just left. I thought it was dead. And, you know, I don't know, maybe just two or three days went by and she goes, could you pay 275 She was actually started at 850 
And yeah. I'm like, I can pay 275 like I can pay 850 right? I said, but here's what I can do. I said, I can, I can, uh, if you finance it, I can do it and I'll pay you, you know, I'll do a one year balloon, meaning I'll pay you all of it, get a bank loan if I make it a year um, and pay you all of it in one year, but pay payments, you know, spread out over a 20 year amortization. Right. And, and she actually went for it, um, but she wanted some money down and I didn't have, I, I had $10,000, my wife and I pulled out from underneath the cushions and stuff mm -hmm. and we were able to come up with 10 grand and we went to, um, you know, her dad and we asked if he would loan us $10,000 and he said, yes. And we were very grateful. And then now I owed him 10 grand. So I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what am I doing? Here? You know, oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, and guys, we've only been married just a little over maybe just two years at okay. this point. So you're still technically in that honeymoon phase. Yeah, ish. still in that honeymoon phase. And then it gets worse. Um, so he agreed to give us the 10,000. She agreed to finance the money. And then I went to, after all that was going, I said, oh, there's one other thing that we have to do. So I was, had a great, I had a good job and it was paying me well. My wife had a good job paying her well. And we had just built a new house. Actually, um, it helped to be in the building business because we right. could get a lot and build a house for a lot cheaper than retail. For sure. But we had just built a new house and I said, well, I need you to quit your job too, because I, I can't run the office. I need to figure out how to run the, the business. And I need you to be the, the money person and manage all the money. And she goes, okay. Well, she didn't even, didn't even blame, you know, and, uh, you that's know. huge. Yeah, that's huge. She's always I've been just, 26 years. And I don't know if I can think back yeah, to year yeah, two, five yeah, or yeah. 12. So <laughs> something, to something gave her the confidence that I could do it. And she always tells a story and how she just said yes and went for it. And so we both quit our jobs and, so kind of gets worse than that. Um, we walk in the next morning. It was 530 in the morning and the whole company was there. And we were in a little, little bitty room and um, I'd start telling them who I am and that I was the new owner. And when I said I was the new owner, half of them started walking out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how, many, how many staff did you have at that time? Do you remember? I would just say I would say all total, there was probably 18 to 20 people mm -hmm. and 10 to 12 of them left. That wow. morning. And so they left with one of the department managers and they they just basically went and took that work away from what I just bought. They just took that wow. work. So I mean really wasn't much I could do about it. So I just kept a positive attitude and a positive attitude was, well, I just have half as much to worry about. Right. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Right. I mean, I'm getting in this thing, I don't really know what I'm doing. That's really all you can do. And I have half as much to worry about. So that's how I looked at it. And, I, you know, I don't even remember a conversation later that night with my wife about that. You know, I can't believe those guys left. What's going to happen? I don't even remember having that conversation. I don't think we even worried about it because I was, I was, I was in intentions to succeed. Well, wow. no matter what. Mm -hmm. And and so I just didn't let it bother me. And that's, that's one of the, I tell this story to all of my people that come to work here. And, then, and I tell them this because. No matter what you're going through, if you just stay positive on it, you're going to figure out how to get away. Yes. You know, and and so yes. there I was, $10,000 in debt to my father-in-law, $10,000 that we had saved is all, you know, in the company. And half the people left. And the ones that stayed were actually the ones that probably should have stayed. Yeah. And the other ones probably, you know, it just worked out. And so we got to business. I met with all the, uh, the builders and introduced myself. But couple days in my wife you know back then we had what's called a green sheet green bar and you the paper was white and then green white and green it was columns right and we had these dos mm -hmm. computers we actually had a computer that was a dos computer and i it's the first time i've ever played around with one of those things but i didn't really know what to do so my wife figured it out and she's like billy we you know we have almost three hundred thousand dollars in receivables and i go okay what's oh, wow. a receivable <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Is that a good thing? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and she goes, well, we have about $300,000 in money that people owe us. These builders haven't paid. Oh, wow. And I'm like, really? And so I had a friend that's about my age, and she had gone to college, and she became an attorney, a divorce attorney of all things. But, mm -hmm. you know, she was an attorney. Yeah. So yeah. I went to her, and I said, what do I do? How do I get this money from these folks? 
you know, because I could I could use that money to build a business because I, you know, and uh, she goes, well, we'll file liens on all those addresses, uh, and tend to lien, and you take them to those builders and you show them these liens that you're fixing to file. Wow. And those liens go to the homeowners, and and so, long story short. Um, three or four days later, I had $275,000 in cash. Are you kidding me? No kidding. Holy cow. So, so I stayed positive. We worked through the hard stuff and then something great happened. Something's happened. Right. Yeah. And so now I had a company that had $275,000 in cash. Not only that, they had done about $45,000 worth of work that first week mm -hmm. and that money came in. Whoa. Wow. And I just had a payroll that I had to make and no bills due yet because... You know, we just did the work. And um, so all of a sudden we were we were off to the races. It just happened. Mm -hmm. And basically bought the company for nothing. Took my father-in-law. Um, they used to, we used to call him up and go, hey, what are y'all doing tonight? Then, oh, we're going to Tia's or we're going somewhere to eat. We knew that. That's why we called. Mm -hmm. So they would buy and they would invite us. Well, <laughs> nice enough to That's invite what us. my daughter is doing with her. That's right. So <laughs> she would, so we would, Dad, what are you guys up to? I don't know. We're yeah. Oh, God. So I call them up and I go, hey, what are you guys up to? And they're like, oh, I'm you know, doing whatever. Um, going to go to dinner. I said, well, do y'all mind if we go to the Outback? The Outback. Holy cow. That's fucking blew my lungs and everything. Yeah, $25 steak. You know, that's a lot of money yeah. back then. Um, if it was 20 bucks, whatever it cost. Yeah, oh, then, for sure. I remember that was big, big news. It was big news and big bucks. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we just won you ten thousand dollars, and you want to go to Outback? And I'm like, well, just would y'all meet us there? And they said fine, and they went prepared to buy our dinner at a more expensive place. <laughs> but I paid. The I, beggar was choosing. Is that what that's right? Saying? And so, guys, what I did was is I bought dinner for the first time ever, and I gave him his ten thousand dollars back with five hundred dollars in interest. And three weeks after, I'm living Rock on. home. Rock on. And awesome. and then he's like, wow. That that I never expected to get this back. He goes, but I'm going to give it back to you because I give ten thousand dollars to all my daughters. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I'm like, okay, this is this is cool. I said, you know what though? I looked at my wife and she looked at me and we're like, we're not take, taking that money back, right? Yeah, yeah. And the principal thing, that, right? right? And then that, my comment was, all right, so I'm you're we're not taking that money back, but. Don't spend it. I might need it. <laughs> you know, just just keep it in case I things need are it. good now, but let's yeah, see just hang year. on to it. Mm -hmm. And thankfully I never had to ask for it. Um we we pulled ourselves out of all that. And I learned real quickly that when you um bull, bully a, a home builder, he's probably looking for another plumber. Uh, but fortunately I already knew that they couldn't find one. And so it was worth taking that risk of bullying that guy to pay us. That is so interesting. Uh, it's so interesting because that makes a ton of sense because you basically just followed the dots. You connected all the dots. Yeah, going, wow. Yeah. And then I just learned about myself. I didn't think I had any skills at all because I, you know, in school, nothing was there to show me I had any real skills, can't dance, can't sing. I just didn't have any skills. Right. And I learned a lot about myself that actually I was someone that could actually look at a problem and, and solve it wow. uh, when it comes to business. And and I'm really, really good at that. And and still to this day, I can look at someone's financial statements and in three to five minutes, I can tell them everything that's wrong with their company. Oh, wow. And that's what we do, you know, with all of our people that come over on Sarah and we line out, you know, exactly what's going on with their companies and we help them. And so I found my talent by accident and I'm a pretty daggum good marketer. I didn't realize that either. So I was able to build and scale companies. And so in a, in a 10, 12 year period, we hundred X the business. We basically- We're talking stopped, about Berkey's? Yes, we just basically stopped doing new construction and started doing service. Oh, Cause wow. my next dot that I wanted to count was, um, you know, where everybody else is going, you need to go the other way. Yeah. And, and so everyone was trying to do homes cause Dallas was booming. Mm -hmm. And no one was really, they had service trucks, but that wasn't the focus. Mm -hmm. And so we went a hundred percent service wow. and was able to create this monster of a service company um, because everyone else was focused on the ups and downs business, yeah. right? And so we got completely out of that business uh, of new construction, went a hundred percent service, hundred X the company, 
And then from that point, um, met a couple of guys from uh, San Francisco area that were um, finance guys, Stanford mm -hmm. guys um, that wanted to buy, they bought businesses and then they would use the money and buy more businesses and mm -hmm. scale. They had never been in our trades before. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we got to talking and then Berkey's ended up being the pilot for all things PE that we're experiencing now, 11 wow. years later. Wow. Um, and so that was really what it ended up happening. And so this was, this was a guy, me, mm -hmm. that saw nothing but, you know, ups and downs and stress for my parents, uh, trying to run a business to not knowing really what he wanted to do with himself. I didn't, you know, I, I knew I wanted to work for myself, but mm -hmm. I didn't know how or what. And then things just fell in place for me, or, or maybe I was aware. That's the thing. I think things fall in place for everyone somewhere. You just got to be, uh, have your eyes open. You have to recognize it and jump on it. You have to take, yes, you have to take initiative and, and take advantage of it and, and see that there's an opportunity is what is how I believe things happen. And this is what I've always taught my kids as well. Um, you know, is always, you know, keep your eyes open to opportunities. You know, when we sit at a restaurant, we don't talk about how successful that big restaurant or that Outback Steakhouse is. We talk about the guy that makes the two picks or the guys that make the salt shakers. Those are the guys that made all the money. Wow. Right. And and so that's that's how I think and, and that's how I create these businesses. That's very cool. Right. Because it's just like looking at a new car. Uh -huh. You know, there's a car company and, you know, and it's owned by some big conglomeration. So the guy making the car is not making all the money. It's the guy that makes those five lug nuts. There's 20 lug nuts that are on every car. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's how I, you know, that's what I teach downstairs with our, with our employees. That's very cool. Is don't look at the obvious, look at the things that aren't obvious and then see if there's a way to improve that. And that's really all we do, whether it's a Billy Go, Berkey's or, if it's uh, Sarah, it, it doesn't matter. It's always look outside of the box. Thinking is what we do here, and mm -hmm. and and with that mentality, we've been very successful at everything we've done, and we've brought a lot of folks into the trades, and they've been very successful. When I started Berkey's, not a single person that worked for me in the first five years mm -hmm. owned a home. Wow, not a single employee owned a home. Wow. And when when uh, I left Berkey's um, in the 2012, almost 90 percent of the employees that were there owned a home, had money saved for college for their kids if they wanted to go to college or whatever they wanted to do, and and were on you know budgets and understood what it took to save money, and so they were happy. They weren't stressed, man. Right, and that's and that's what we really focused on. And if we could get more and more of these contractors to start thinking about giving back instead of just taking, I think we we'll, uh, we would get as many people as we could actually do. See, Billy, that's exactly what I'm talking about. For every single kid who happens to see this, because we've got some pretty interesting, you know, connections within school systems, things like that, junior colleges and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've always been interested in how people make money. You know, there's a million one different ways, to your point. The guy making the toothpicks, right, is making more money than the restaurant that they're in. That's right. The person making the lug nuts is making more money than the dealership and or the manufacturer of that car. So making lug nuts for all, you know, for all, all cars. Them, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and nobody thinks about that. Mm -hmm. You know, what's really exciting is, is I have to bring this back to the trades. There's no doubt in my mind a person with, with your intellect and with your ability to take a step back and really kind of you know, breathe out properly and see things for what they are and with a positive attitude, you know, move forward. Mm -hmm. You would have been successful in, 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 in pretty much any industry that you that you went into. I have no doubt about that. I just I just kind of tell stuff. I, I feel that vibe coming from you. But would you say that the blue collar world really made it a lot easier for you to excel the way that you have? That's the only reason I made it. It's, it's something that I love from day one. I never was going to be a corporate guy. Mm -hmm. I was going to be blue collar from, from day one. Yeah. And I just needed to figure out where my place was. And, and, and fortunately I found it and that's all anybody needs to do is where's your place, Yeah, and, you know, in this world that we're in, in this, um, you know, whatever it is, but I'm telling you the, the blue collar trades to can do more for your, you than I think just about anything else. Absolutely. I mean, could you imagine sitting in a cubicle all day long, you know, somewhere in a corporate job and you got all this debt from college and you're, you know, you're in front of a computer and 
you're having meetings. Where's the fun in that? What What are your thoughts there, <laughs> sir? I agree with you a million percent. I don't know how many times I, I would get written up a million times. Oh, yeah. Wood's our HR, and he's always saying, all right, sit down. <laughs> no, I, I've been I've been there, and the, the thing that I loved was actually being out in the field. Uh, when I had to sit in a cubicle or sit in the office and bear down, that was never my favorite part of things. I, I love to interact with people. So, but it's, there was something you said there that it, it seems like you kind of came into the industries. You, you had started with, with a contractor, but then pretty quick, you ended up in a position that would be management or ownership level, right? Mm -hmm you've got to have seen some of the potential for, for the guys who start at the lowest levels or the entry points and kind of go to tell us a little bit about maybe some success stories with guys who you've seen kind of flourish coming through the trades. Oh, sure. I have, I have several people I can talk about right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so um, there's a couple of guys here that worked for me that worked with me in Berkey's as well. Um, one of the guys that uh, runs our plumbing division, uh, mm -hmm. department manager, his name's Jeff, and and Jeff Jeff had a, a a back problem or something back you know 15, 20 years ago when I when we actually finally hired him, and he got himself a little addicted to the pain pills, mm -hmm. and then when he was on the pain pills, he liked to drink a little bit, and he and he had a mullet, no offenses to mullets. But he had a good one. Sounds like the biggest Cowboys fan. He, he had a great mullet. Was he from and, Mississippi and, by and, any and so, and, and so he comes in out of nowhere, never met him, don't know where he came from. And, and I could see there was a great person in there, but he wasn't seeing it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I knew I needed to get him to see it. So the first thing I told him, he asked for a job. He talked about all that, just him and I, one-on-one. -on -one. This is many years ago. And I said, you know what? You, you just look a little rough. Why don't you go home and shave and, and cut your hair? Make yourself look better, and then maybe I'll have a different impression of you. I really did this, and he'll stand up here. You get him on the show. He'll tell you the whole story. Wow. Um, and we would love to actually if he'd be interested. Yeah, yeah, he'd be interested, and for sure, it's a great story. And and I, I was done. I can never see that guy again. Right? I just mm -hmm. basically sent him off, gave him something to do. Well, next day he comes back, he was clean shaven, and he cut off most of the <laughs> mm -hmm. So the whole party wasn't gone, yeah. but, but the after two party was out the window. And I looked at him, I said, all right. I said, I don't know, I think you need to take another two inches off. I did. That's all I said to him. I said, I'm did. I said, yeah, I swear to you, I did that. But I could, but I'm like, he came back. If he but comes back can... again. Then I can start talking to him about how to fix himself, right? Because wow. he showed me that he's wanting to get out of this thing he's in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, this hole he's in mm -hmm. by coming back. Yeah. And I'm like, if this guy come back one more time, I'll hire him and then I'll help him. And lo and behold, he came back. He came back three days later. So it took him three days. He really had to think about it. <laughs> or maybe he had to go on a binge. I don't know. We'll let, I him, hear say, that. We'll let him tell you that part. In fact, I'm getting chills from it. It's just a great story. But um, so he came back and he was clean cut. He looked a heck of a lot better. And then we didn't even talk about what he what his skills were. I knew he was a commercial phone. That's mm -hmm. all I knew about. Him. Right. We mm -hmm. started and I said, okay, so what got you in the phone picture? And I mean, literally, I just go right to it. I just went right to it. It's cut to the chase. Let's do it. That's I, I see there's a person in there that's a genuine person, but I can tell by looking at you, you're not doing you're not living right. Mm -hmm. And he goes, No, sir, I'm not. He go, and he told me a story, you know, what's going on? And I said, Can you kick it? Can you kick this problem you got? He goes, I can. I said, I'll give you an opportunity to kick it. And he said he could. And so this is the guy I'm just gonna stick out there in the field and you know, if he made it, he made it. If he didn't, he didn't. But I was going to talk to him every chance I got. You know, that's what I was going to do, and and see if I could stay on top of him. And then he, you know, he struggled a little bit. I'm not going to say it was a miracle. And this overnight, he appeared. You know, he would definitely miss every freaking Monday. But every Tuesday through Friday, he sold more stuff than everybody. Else. <laughs> I, I mean, made up for it. He could sell everything. So he thought that was okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and finally, after missing a few Mondays, you know, over the course of a year, a bunch of Mondays, I finally said, Jeff, I'm sorry, but we can't work here anymore. He goes, 
Why? I'm number one in sales. I'm da da da. I'm like, but you're still not living right. Yeah. You're still taking advantage. You care about it. Yeah. You're still not doing what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, you're a business owner in the trades that actually cared about it, Bella. Not cared about the fact that you are literally about to kick out your top sale. What, are you hearing this? You actually care about this guy? Yeah. Cared about him. He was my number one sales, but he meant more to me. Holy cow. And so I had to to fire him. Had to fire him. And he goes, I'll never miss another Monday. I'll never do any of this again if you give me another chance. And I said, I'm going to give you another chance because I believe in you. Mm-hmm. And I, but the difference is I believe in you. And that doesn't mean anything. You need to start believing in yourself. Yeah. And I said, maybe you should go to church. Yeah, you, yeah, maybe that's something you should do. And, you know, I said, it, it helps me, keeps me in line. Mm-hmm. And uh, he did. Wow. And he joined the church. He did all that stuff. He's the, He is still with me today, by the way. And he is a significant owner in Billy Goat. Wow. And so he is he has definitely made his way from that I'm not gonna hire you, go cut your hair to mm-hmm. owning a very successful enterprise. And, and being an owner and living the lifestyle, been married to the same wife now ever since I've met him. He got wow. got all that straight straightened out. And and he's probably downstairs right now. He's the first guy here. 15, wow. 18 years later, still the first guy here in the morning. Every Monday morning, he's here. And and that's just one of many, many stories. I mean, but there's three guys sitting downstairs. And there's a a, a lady also that um, all that is with me, um, uh, Dottie. And all of them came from situations that weren't so great. And But I could see what they had in them. And all of them have been with me 15 plus years. And, um, you know, they're all, you know, they got a piece of the action. Oh, um, they're, they, they, you you know, money where you that's it. You. And that's right. And you know Holy what, cow. they do such a great job that, you know, they helped us build Berkey's. And then when I, re- when I, uh, stepped aside after a couple of years, after I sold it, um, they went on to grow the business, you know, significantly without me there. Mm-hmm. And then, um, when, uh, after a few years, it, you know, got very corporate and they wanted to, uh, do it something with me again. Mm-hmm. And that's when we decided to uh, to start Billy Go. But I had, you know, I had a couple of things that I wanted to do. And I said, I really don't want to do this again. I built the best company that I could ever build. And I don't want to start from scratch again and do that again. Um, I don't really have to. How many people did Berkey's have well, by the time you were done? By the time you, you finally gave the keys you know, to the to the kingdom and someone else and said, I'm going to Tahiti or whatever. <laughs> I don't know if it's I don't remember exactly. It's 80 to 100. 80 to 100 people. If you're in North Texas, you know which one he's, which yeah. one we're talking about. Perkies with him and me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, if Billy goes better, obviously. Better. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I can't sing or dance, so neither can you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But um yeah, so they're still they're still with me. So all four of them came um came and met me and said, We want to do this. And I said, I have only one thing that I want to do. I don't really want to do this again, but I'll do it because you guys want to do it again. And uh, I said, if we could build some software to run it and maybe help the industry and I can give back because I just felt like I need to give back beyond my company. Mm-hmm. I wanted to give back to the whole space. Because it's been so good to me. I never in a million years thought I'd be in the position I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 change all the lives that I've changed in the process and help uh, people. And and so with that in with that in mind, that's what I decided, you know, they said, Oh heck yeah, that's exactly what we want you to do. Mm-hmm. And I said, Well, then you're gonna be the test dummy for every bad idea I have. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and so that's what Billy Go does. And uh, it's grown into an enormous business in four years. And I literally work down there once a week. I do my meetings. That's uh, awesome. You know, I do yeah. my meetings. And right now I'm probably doing them once a month, but um, because I'm so busy at Sarah and I don't have to worry about it. Um, you know, of course, Sarah tells me what's going on, at, you know, in real time. And so I can just take a peek at it. And, and but I don't really have to. And then they're doing what I did. They bring in kids with no experience and, or maybe some experience and and teach them like I taught them. 
And so we just continue that on going on. And um, I mean, we have a 16 year old kid here that graduated high school by the age of 16. Oh, very, wow. very smart scholarships to schools, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be he wanted to be in the trades. Wow, that's awesome. And decided to not even go to college. He wanted to be in the trades. Wow. And so he's been with us. I don't know, almost say seven, eight months, maybe a year now. Time goes so fast. And in that in that process, he went from you know basically digging ditches, you know, you know, mm -hmm. gotta start at the bottom. Sure, you have to. And yeah, because it's the dirty job, and you want to see how somebody does. Yeah. If you throw all the crap on them, it's just that's where you got to start. The yeah. ladder mm -hmm. starts at the first rung. Right. Right. And, then, and then his sister joined us right after that. She's 18. I bet she's so, killing it. And so both of these kids started at the bottom. There's no favoritism here. And we try to teach them and move them up. We don't, and, and teach them how to do things. We hope yeah. that we don't keep them in a ditch for long because we want to keep that, you know, keep them moving. And uh, both of them have graduated to our hydrostatic testing department. And oh, so, wow. cool. so they do hydrostatic tests every day because we get, you know, 10, 20 of those a day that we have to go do. And so they locate leaks and stuff now, all wow. within the next eight months or however long. It and is. that that's a specialty, right? That's a, yeah, that's, that's a specialty. A, that's a huge and they got those young leak. ears, so they can hear and they know where those they can find the leaks. If so. I had to do that job, there'd be leaks everywhere, as far as I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we let them. We so then once they learn how to uh, find the find the leaks, mm -hmm. then we were we turn them loose on. All right, do you think you could sell the job? Right, right. That's the mm -hmm. next level, right? Can you actually sell it without me sending the plumber out there and sell it? Mm -hmm. And yes, they can, and they do. Uh, I think they sold about four hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, underground tunnels, re, re pipes last wow. month alone. Just wow. the last month. Wow. And 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 so and then we have the plumbing. The, the plumbers come in. They they once the uh, tunnels dug out or whatever it is, the plumbers come in and do the plumbing. And they don't need to be licensed to sell it. They're not doing any work at all. Um, mm -hmm. they're, just, they're just, you know, they have a system. They're using the tech app, the way it's designed, and customers respond to it. And then they do, you know, there's about four hundred thousand dollars of, of uh, underground jobs so, on a monthly basis. So they they're eighteen, twenty years old. Sixteen and eighteen. Six, and how old? Sixteen and eighteen. And they're they're selling four hundred thousand dollars a month. There there's a pretty bright future for I would say for those two in the trades, and yeah, it won't just be at the technician level, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't have to be text to make money here. Um, so I think that's, that's what, you know I'm not doing this video for recruiting. I'm doing this video so that other owners will do what we're doing. Yeah, no, for no, sure. Get, uh, 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 no, we have a line out the door to come to work here already. That's not mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do. Um, and that's a big problem in the industry. I can't find help. We don't, we don't have that problem. Well, you put, your money, you, you, think too, money. Though, you put your money where right. your mouth is. Exactly. I'm sitting right next to you while you're telling me this story. At the same time, you're getting goosebumps. It makes me get goosebumps only because I know what it's like to be someone in the field trying to get a break. Hope that it translates mm -hmm. to the mic hitting the table. Um, being told one thing, but but having you know something totally different happen, mm -hmm. the person mm -hmm. you interview with is not the person that that gives you the face they give you when they're like, how dare you ask for this? How dare you ask for that? You, you know what I mean? Right. There's way more of that out there than there are owners and operators right. like yourself. Right. You know, what is it? Treat others the way you want to be treated. It almost sounds like you're pretty much practicing that as, as tightly as you possibly can. Yeah, you know, wow. especially at the level that you're at now. I mean, it'd be just as easy for you to be so far removed from everything that, that you know, you don't care what your managers do as long as the zeros are there. But Sounds like that's the exact opposite. No, I don't count zeros. I'm counting uh, relationships, and we that's, that's we, very and cool. we build infrastructure. And if you build the culture right, and your people are happy, the the, the zeros count. Mm -hmm. So you don't, we never chase zeros because we can build zeros mm -hmm. to our people. Mm -hmm. You know, burnout not just with new kids uh, coming up through the field. Sorry, guys. I'm calling you kid. My apologies. You know, I'm not trying to, my daughter's got a 25 year old and a 21 year old. Mm -hmm. And if I say you kids, you know, and they think it's something other than you are my kid, like these kids are like, how dare, you know? So mm -hmm. I got to walk on eggshells constantly, that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, young folks these days are so many of them that are getting burned out. We talked about that a little bit. No doubt in my mind, you've actually experienced that. I know for a fact, Woods, uh, unfortunately experienced stuff like that before. Um, we see it. You know, just in our travels, just in what we've done, but also when we go to these high schools and junior highs, you know, sometimes you talk to people who 
who, if they do have, uh, you know, any type of it, um, experience usually it's from somebody in their family and you hear some pretty scary stories about that. Um, but also the folks that are, that are seasoned in the field, five-year service plumbers, you know, 10-year construction electricians, 12-year HVAC installers, those types of folks working for owners that, that, that do the same thing, they get to burn out too. I, you know, I don't know what the numbers are on this, but I, I'm willing to bet that there's there's a pretty pretty significant percentage of folks that don't make it through retiring in this field because they hear the stories about having the ability to make great money while doing something that helps the public, whether it's service or construction. You know, I've got some really cool construction stories. You, you, you know, talk about towards the end if you're cool with that. Um, but but the, these folks that are getting this burnout, they're hearing these stories, but they're jaded because. They have been working with contractors that all they're thinking about is, hey, how do I get to, to a number so I can bail out? I don't care what's going to happen. Right. You know, that's kind of the popular thing these days, it seems like, right? Let's get this to a certain number and then we're leaving. Let's lie to everybody that we possibly can. And if that makes you uncomfortable, I apologize. I'm not afraid to talk to contractors and tell them straight up, you know. Um, unfortunately, that's going on a lot. And let, let everybody know that people like you exist. To say we exist, we exist, we do. I mean, <laughs> we're out here. I mean, we get it, and and we know we need more folks in the trades. I mean, we just absolutely have to. The population's growing, less and less people are doing this. Yeah. They're aging out. As yeah, you said. for sure. Um, there is so much upside. So well, much. I think, yeah, I think too. Some of the some of the challenges that push people towards colleges, you know, it's that, it's that old adage. I've seen it on posters. I've actually heard it said, son, see what he's doing. If you don't go to college, you'll end up doing that. And they have no clue that that auto mechanic makes more money than the father two or three times over. But the father's thinking he's doing a favor for the son by saying, you know, go to college or you'll end up like that. And so when I'm, when I highlight what you, what that story you just told about the, the 16 and 18 year old who are making, I would think significant money if they're selling that kind of volume, they don't realize that exists. They're used to, oh, well, I'm in high school or I'm just out of high school. I guess I guess I can work at McDonald's and no disrespect, or I can, I can work for that one hour oil change or five minute oil change, but, or I can be a barista. And they don't realize that, you know what, if you apply yourself and you find yourself the, in the right situation, you don't, you don't. And again, I'm not dissing college. I, I want, if I have an attorney, I want an attorney who's been to college in the law school. Yeah. If I have a doctor, I want some, if, you know, all sorts of things college is important for. That's but right. it's, it's never just an alternative based on what your career goals are. It seems like it's always Oh, that's the key to the kingdom right there. And you know what? There's other keys on the key ring, so to speak. And that's what I love about your story is ju just the fact that it's like, hey, look, these kids came in, they applied themselves and look at where they're at. So, and again, there I go using the word kids. So well, I mean, in this situation, they are right. And, yeah. and, and I often wondered how many plumbing or HVAC shops they may have gone to would have never even given them an opportunity because yeah. of, because of the ages, right? Mm -hmm. And and the inexperience, and and then we found found some diamonds in the rough, if you will, you know. And so now we have a department that they're a part of that's you know doing a significant amount of revenue um, for for the business, and then they're being rewarded for it. Now, and when mm -hmm. the company makes money here, we give back. We give money back to the employees, yeah. and we do it, and we disperse it out into the community. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, you know, create this culture that we have. And, and, then, awesome. and we get together. Um, I'm fortunate I have a large piece of property, a ranch out in East Texas, and we go out there. And that's what they talk about all year long. And uh, right to the ranch. Yeah. And this year we blew up a, uh, a 3,000 square foot old home. We blew it up with Tanner Rice. You didn't. Yes. I have a video. So if you want. We got to do that, man. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you the video. If you want to add it to this. Yes. yes absolutely. We actually blew up this house. And it was crazy. Uh, we, we put 200 pounds of Tanner in this house. My goodness. 
in a um, in an ice chest, a really big ice chest. We filled it up with tannerite. Uh, had one of them shoot it, and it blew the whole thing up. <laughs> It was crazy how I tore that thing up. And uh, yeah, I'm still finding stuff, you know, half a mile away. That's that's pretty cool. Did you have to call in for, you know, the fire marshal? Or uh, are you guys are way out in the boonies? No, uh, yes, we are way out in the boonies. And the, the nice thing about Tannerite, it's it's actually water vapor. Really? And then when it ignites, it, it, it basically it implodes, and that's the bomb. And so it, the actual spark of the bullet, it, you have to have a high velocity bullet, uh -huh. and you coat it in gunpowder. You cut coat the little pellets in gunpowder, okay. and and then you put it in this, uh, and it's very stable. You know, you can buy it at an academy. I mean, really? You know, yeah, you can just buy it at an academy, and and so it's expensive. But you know, over the course of a year, we keep buying a little bit at a time till we got to the two hundred pounds, right? That's awesome. And every year we build a bigger bomb. The year before, we set a water heater in the stratosphere. <laughs> Uh, I think we had 60 pounds <laughs> and, and we literally set that white heater so high in the air. Um, but it's very stable product. It's water vapor is wow. really what it is. So there's no fire. Okay. Right. And so if there, anything was to be on fire, this vapor will extinguish that fire. Holy cow. Uh, all in an instance. So it's just a big compression compression bomb is what it is. Well, my only experience really with Tannerite is uh, watching probably one of the greatest shows that's ever graced Netflix, Tiger King. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe Exotic was shoot something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. This isn't an advertisement for Tiger King, but I didn't know that. I thought it was an explosive. It was pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah, you can buy it right off the, right off the shelf at a sporting goods store. Well, East Texas, uh, and I feel like we're, we're, we're probably stretching here pretty long, so it's probably time to start wrapping up for you. But East Texas, um, uh, when I was a kid, we, we lived out there, and lots of massive pine trees were really dense. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing Same that. Thing. Yeah, uh, we used to go out to Tyler State Park, go camping. Actually, I want to take my wife out there. Hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, we're gearing up to, now that we're empty yeah. nesters, we're going to start camping uh, as often as we can and going out there. So that's very awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Please send us that video because during my editing magic, I'll make sure I put it in there. Hopefully Absolutely. right at this spot. Insert explosion here. I got that battery already. Yeah. I didn't either. I did. I did. <laughs> All right. We'll see if I can get that done right. Well, Billy, thanks for taking the time, man. Um, you know, our, our objective is simple. We love the trades, Wood Nine. Um, we both have experience that 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 brought us together. Um, uh, we've been doing this for a number of years. Um, we love helping companies, whether it's to hire people uh, or retain people, which, you know, both of those, and you understand that better than any contractor I think I've ever talked to, it's not just the getting them, it's the keeping them, and not just keeping them, it's helping them grow. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of sayings out there, one that I've heard a lot, you know, what if I train these people and they leave? Well, what if you don't train them and they stay? You know, and, and you have to be willing to invest in people. Mm -hmm. You know, are people going to leave? Yeah, I mean, it's the nature of the beast. It's the way it is. But if they're leaving to better themselves and you're not in a position to give them what they need at that point, not that it's a bad thing. And that, that's, that's nature. That, that's how it works. You know, um, did you want to add anything to, to, to that part there? Wood? No, I think that's pretty well said. I, I appreciate your time, Billy. It's, it's kind Thanks, of good. entertaining, well, especially uh, compared to some of the, some of the things I've seen. And I, I got to tell you, your, your approach with Sarah is, is really nice. I, I mean, it's a sweet deal compared to what I've seen. I've seen corporations spend, you know, well into the millions of dollars to try and do the proprietary thing and have to start over two or three times. And so something that, you know, is simple enough that you, you spend two days with the technicians, they got it. And then I think, what do we hear? It takes less than a month and, and the entire organization can be up to speed on your stuff. Yes, sir. Sarah, that, that's amazing. Cause I, I've seen, I've seen mistakes made and a lot of money spent in that area that maybe could have been better spent. So I'll just say it that way. Yeah. Let's, let, let's end this with, um, with, I don't want to call it an elevator pitch because really this entire conversation, uh, you know, the, the, the whole outside of it is, is really Sarah, you know, as an organization, 
you know, you saw what you didn't have at Berkey's. You were able to build, obviously, an over-the-top successful business. You understood the value of technology, you know, because technology, it, it gets things done. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the more stops that you have from here to here, the less efficient you are. It, it's just the way it is. And now that you, I mean, you, you have proof and concepts. BillyGo is run exclusively on Sarah, and Sarah uses BillyGo, you know, I don't want to say Petri dish, but or, or it's a test market or a yeah. test case or, or whatever analogy you want to put there. So they feed off of each other. Right. What's exciting is this for me, because I have some experience in the software platform, you know, FSMs and things like that. And it's one thing to look at a whiteboard and say, hmm, this sounds like it would be cool because I remember having people come out to my place or I called 50 contractors and did a sampling. And so this, this, and this, it's one thing to do that, but it's another thing to say, okay, I know exactly what I need to do to get my business to go from good to great. And I need a software that can absolutely do that workflow process, you know, and take me from here to here, really pinpoint and highlight KPIs that a lot of other software platforms, unfortunately, they kind of, it's an afterthought to them, but for you, it's the driving force. What uh, what would you say to anybody uh, who would be listening to this, whether they're a contractor that's not using a, a field service management software or that might be using a field service management software, plus anybody that is interested in coming into the trades, but they're afraid that it's all going to be plumbers, cracks, and dirty fingernails. Mm -hmm. Technology plays a big piece in this entire equation. What would you, what would you, what would you say to to, to, to both folks, contractors, you know, and, and folks coming in? What, what, why is Sarah what they need to use? Well, I think Sarah is what they need to use. Number one, because real world experience. Mm -hmm. You know, my experiences, my employees' experiences. You know, we all have these experiences, and we, you know, we're the only software that actually we ran businesses as we built the software. And we ran very successful businesses as well. And so really and truly, if I could just end the chaos that's inherently in these trades, these businesses, I, I think that is the goal here is how we get rid of the chaos that is inherent in the businesses that we have, you know, just, just, you know, just a service call alone, just, just the fact that a customer calls requires 28 touches from four different people, just one service call. Wow. And that is totally ludicrous to me. Mm -hmm. That this doesn't make sense to me. And and so that's one of the things we tackled. How do we take it from 28 to 20? Well, you know what? We took it from 28 to three. Wow. So we've got rid of 25 time wasting things uh, with our software. And so to me, it's just really about getting your time back and ending the chaos. That is my elevator pitch for Sarah. You know, it's just, that's part, pretty good. you know, just, Gosh, you know what I'm talking about because yeah. you live it every day. Yeah, 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 for sure. And and so let's just stop it. Let's just get done and stop doing it the way we've been doing it. Just because that's the way you've always done it. That's wrong. If it ain't broke, don't <laughs> fix it. Yeah. Works in some things, what's, but not in this case. And you know, the thing is, is what's wrong is not changing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, 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 and that's what you have to do is look at, and that's what I do, is I just look at every problem. And we try to solve it at Sarah. So that's that's what we're trying to do here. And then as far as uh, people coming in the yeah. trade, I would say that if you want an adventure and you want to be outside and you want to move around and you want to meet people every day, new people, customers, um, in some cases meet them over and over again, it amazes me how many times some people will call you out. Um, but if you, if you really want a different day every day, never the same thing, um, to me, that's, that's why you need to look at doing this. If that's what you feel like you are, if you're an adventurous outdoorsy person, um, you like people, um, this is where you need to be is to me. Even if you're a gamer and you like solving problems, I mean, heck, what is troubleshooting and diagnosing, but solving problems? Yeah. I mean, it's. It's funny you say that because every everyone that works for Sarah is a gamer. Yes, because that's what they do. I mean, yeah. they they started all playing games. They learned about computers, and now they're building software. Right, mm -hmm. and it and it's really fun to teach them about the trades because they have absolutely no idea. 
yeah. about what we do as a company. And it, and you can just see the wonder in their eyes when we when we give them examples of what happens and why we need to build it. And and that's what makes everybody at Sarah really excited is because they're learning something completely new. new and the people that are in the engineer world uh, are very intrigued by what we do because it's something they never even given one second of thought. It's awesome about. You know, they they don't even know how to you know jiggle the handle. Or yeah, <laughs> I mean, they just they just don't. And it's a hundred percent true. And it's it's just amazing to watch them go. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. In fact, people just think you turn the faucet on the water and, and magically clean water. Yeah, it just comes out. Yeah, you know, yeah, much more. Yeah, you you, you flip the you, you you flip the handle, then the bad water just goes somewhere. Yeah, you know, you know, air conditioner just tools miraculously yeah. appears. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. it's pumping cold air in. They don't understand that it's all about heat transfer. You're taking yeah. heat out. Yeah. Have pumping cold anywhere. And so that's fun to, to um, you know, see them learn something that they've never in their lives, you know, thought about. Dude, I can tell you genuinely like what you do. I love what I do. That's awesome. I do. I'm, that's I'm, pretty doggone cool, man. Yeah, I, I, I love what I do. Um, yeah. Can't wait to get the everyday started. It's fun, fun times. Well, one, uh, I'll, I'll close with, with two things. Um, first of all, thank you very much, you know, for, for being part of this. And I, I certainly hope. I appreciate it. Certainly hope this whole thing comes out, you know, the way it's supposed to. If not, we just want to do it again. But uh, <laughs> oh no! But um, did you hit record? I did. I think I hit record. I didn't hear it say recording stopped yet. Um, but uh, in the construction world, one, one one of the companies that we work with, we've, we've had the pleasure of working with them for a number of years. They're uh, a really good sized electrical contractor out of, out of the Carolinas. And what's really neat in talking to some of their staff, um, you know, they have built cool things like the original Panther Stadium. So if you're a fan of the NFL, imagine being imagine being somebody that's in the trade. You drive by and you're like, "Hey kids, you know what? I actually helped build that." Or if you're servicing a house, or you know, or you're building this or whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. what we do in the trades it changes lives. You it know, does. it really does. I mean, rewind the hands of time before plumbing was a thing, before electrical was a thing. You know, before HVAC and you know um, and heating was a thing. The world was a different place. Was. And the blue collar, the blue collar trades make it a better place for sure. It sure does. Right. I mean, it's one of the things you never think of, mm-hmm. obviously, is Panther Stadium, yeah, Cowboy Stadium. Doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, at halftime, you get five thousand urinals and toilets flushing all at the same time. Yes, How they the world Do you get that? <laughs> That's right. right. That's right. That in itself is a major engineering feat. It is in itself, and that's what's cool about the trades. Absolutely. There's so many things that we do. It's super cool that people don't even think about. That's fantastic. Well, guys, I was joking with Billy whenever we first uh, started talking, and he had first agreed to do our podcast. Yeah, would you would you hold that one up for me, sir? Yeah. And so I don't know how you say this, but it's got a skull on. I'm sure anybody with with any internet uh, uh, connectivity, they they've seen the one chip challenge. Now, I'm a massive fan of spicy food. I'm, I don't know if you'll meet anybody who likes spicier food more than me. Um, and I'm not sure, Billy. Billy, are you a fan of spicy food? Not as much as you. Not as much, yeah. Uh, my <laughs> wife, uh, you know, I've been happily married for 26 years. My wife's been happily married for two of those yeah. 26 years. Not all at the same but time. It was another marriage. Well, yeah, exactly. That's what it was. But then I think part of it's because of my love of uh, spicy stuff. So here's what we're going to do. We're not going to do the, the chip challenge now. But what, what video count do you think we should get? If we get a certain video count on this once it goes live, hopefully in a couple of days. And, and let, let's make a realistic number, okay? You know, but if we get to a certain video count, let me ask you, Billy, would you be open to doing another video of Blue Collar Talent Scouts with Sarah slash Billy Go, whoever you want to choose, actually doing the chip challenge together? Would you be down for that? I'd be down for it. What 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 number? It's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than a thousand, right? Okay. How, how many How many do you think? About 5,000. 5,000, if we get 5,000 views, 5,000 views. If we get 5,000 views, then we will come back on. Uh, Blue Collar Talent Scouts will be here. We'll set up a time, you know, and we will do the one chip challenge. And I guess we'll have to set up rules for that after the fact. But, uh, but yeah, you heard it here, folks. Hot off the presses. Here That's we good. go. That was good. Here we go. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, have a wonderful day, yeah. Billy. You're amazing. Thank you, sir. Wood, enjoyed it, sir. Hope you're having a great Thank day, you. my friend. Yes, sir. And we're out.